Hey, how's it going? Seth here from retipster.com, and today I'm going to talk to you about how to use the My Maps feature in Land ID. This can be super useful for marketing, for due diligence, for communicating with others on your team, and I don't really know of any other service out there other than Land ID that can do this kind of thing. So, if you're a land investor, land developer, if you have to have anything to do with property research on vacant land or even other types of properties, this can be super useful. So, if you have a land ID account, all you have to do is log in. If you want to create a new map, you just go right here to create a new map and get started. And you'll want to go to whatever state the property is in. So a lot of people, they might be working in one state all the time because they never have reason to go anywhere else. But if you're like me, you might buy land all over the country. So in my case, I'm going to go over here to Washington for this example. And uh, whenever you're using this feature, you generally won't even get here until you have a specific property in mind. So you might have a property address, or if you're dealing with vacant land, a lot of times there is no address yet. So you might just have a legal description or the coordinates or the parcel ID number or the owner name or the owner address, which is different from the actual address of the property itself. So pretty much any information you have about the property, you can use that to find where your property is located. In my case, I have a parcel ID number. So we're going to start by saying which county this is in. Mine's in Benton County. I'm going to put in the ID right here and we'll click go. And it's going to take us right there. And um, by default, it's going to display the owner name of each property over the parcel. So if you want to leave that on, you can, or you can turn it off here if you want. And you're also going to see a lot of helpful information about the property right here on the left. You can see the owner's address. You can see what type of deed it has, the land value calculated. I'm not sure exactly where that's coming from. It's probably taking the assessed value or something. I usually don't trust that number that implicitly, regardless of where it's coming from, because land is such a squirrely type of property, the value in the first place. But it'll give you something there. It'll tell you the number of acres, the square feet, the zoning, the legal description, all kinds of stuff. But the real reason we're here using this feature is because this can be used to mark up the property in any way you want. And there's a lot of different potential use cases for this. For example, let's say this was a property that you already owned and you're trying to sell this thing and you want to draw people's attention to certain things on the property that they might want to know about, like special features or things that could be done on the property or things that are already there. So over here, we're going to find all these different things we can use to mark up the property. We can put points of interest on here, like say if there was a barn on the property or a cabin or a gate or a house or a horse stall or anything like that, we could put that stuff right here on the property. This particular example, there is nothing on it. It's just a hill right here on the north side and then this little flat portion with some crops growing there. But let's say I wanted to say, hey, we could put a house right over here in this corner. I could click on this thing and then put it right there. Or say if I wanted to add certain pictures of the property that were taken on the property and I want to indicate where those pictures were taken from. I could click on this and maybe click it right there. Now, once that is there, I can go ahead and click on this and then upload pictures to Land ID. So let's say if I already had some pictures here. So all I'd have to do is click this plus thing here and then go select wherever that file is on my computer and then upload this thing. Now, this is not a real picture of this actual property. It's just an example I'm putting here just to show you what can be done. But that's all I'd have to do. And another thing we could do, say if we wanted to indicate where a road is on this property or something like that, we could go to these lines here. And I'm noticing there's kind of like a main road up here in the uh, southwest corner. There's also sort of a dirt road over here and then almost like a two track trail up here. So I'm going to take this primary road thing and I'm going to click here to there to there and then click that final thing again. Now that's going to indicate where the primary road is and we could take this road trail option and then we could click on here, up here, over there, over there. And we're just indicating where this trail goes. And there we go. There's other things for like a river or a creek or a stream. Say if there's something here that you can't really see from a satellite map, but you know it's there. You can indicate that really clearly here. You can put uh, railroad tracks, transmission lines. Say if this property has power access at a certain point, you could indicate where that is and where it's coming from. If there's a fence around this property, lots of stuff you can do with that. And there's also these shapes here. So like the boundary tool, for example, I've seen this used a lot when people are planning to subdivide properties and it's not subdivided yet, but they're trying to indicate to their surveyor, this is where I think it should be subdivided. They can kind of put those boundary lines here. So say, for example, if we wanted to zoom out a little bit here and use this boundary tool, or there's another one over here, here 
here we could use, but if I just use this one and we're gonna say, yeah, let's split this property in half or let's split it maybe where this little valley is going. We could click here and then click there, click there, there and there and there and there and then finish it off by clicking that first point. And then we could do it again. We could say we wanted to subdivide it over here too and then do it one more time down here. Sometimes people do it this way based on how the topography of the land is. When you know that there's a hill going right through the property, it wouldn't make a ton of sense to like cut a line right through that. So we're trying to work with the lay of the land. Another thing we could use if we go back to points here. So let's say we've got a video that we wanna put on here. We could put this thing right there as well. And similar to the photo we uploaded earlier, we could do the same kind of thing where we click on add photo, but this isn't a photo. This time it's a video and we can find a link from wherever, whether it's YouTube or Vimeo or wherever that video is hosted. I'll go grab a random one from my YouTube channel and click upload. And uh, now it's gonna have that video embedded right there. Now, whenever you want, you can just save this map with whatever you have on there and give it a name. You can add a description if you want. You can put the number of acres if you want, the county, all this stuff, it's up to you. And we're gonna save it. Now, once this thing is saved, now it's gonna give us this share button. And the cool thing about this is there's a number of different ways to share it. For example, we could copy this thing, the unbranded link, and we could text it to somebody or email it to somebody or give it to them however we want to. I'll just open up a uh, incognito window here and paste that link so that we can see what this would look like to whoever receives that map. And keep in mind, this can also be viewed very easily on somebody's phone. And with the Land ID mobile app, this works just as well on that phone. Again, this is what a person sees. We can click on photo and video and see the two things that I uploaded there. We can expand this and see a better image of it. We can go check out this video. There's also a tutorial here that kind of explains this is how this map works. This is what you have to click on to use this stuff. It's very user friendly. And another option is to embed this map on your website. So if you have a selling website or any website that just provides property information about a property you're looking at, regardless of the purpose, you can embed that really easily and I'll show you how that works. If you do have a WordPress website, you can go and click on this text thing where you can just embed whatever the code is and that's what that code looks like. And let's go and preview this thing and we'll see how it looks to the end user. And there we go, there's the map, looks Really good, works really well. You can even add all these different layers on it if you want to. And I actually talk about all those overlays in a separate video I made, but just for the purpose of this video, you can see it's like super easy to use. There's also this like 3D version that you can use, whether you're putting the map together or you're the end user like this, where you can get a really, really good look at the property itself, even from a 3D perspective. And all of those overlays and lines and changes that I made to the property will stay on there for the end user to see that. So just an awesome tool for not only due diligence, but also trying to communicate things about the property to somebody else who needs to know this information in a way that is much harder to do if you just take screenshots of like a parcel map from the county, which is better than nothing, but it's not nearly as informative as this kind of thing is. So. Anyway, I just wanted to make sure you were aware of all the different things you can do with the My Maps tool in Land ID. It's pretty awesome. If you decide to use Land ID, just go to land.id or id.land. Either one will take you there. And as I'm sure you'll see, it's a pretty helpful tool if you are regularly in the land business, researching and evaluating properties and use that information to communicate with other people. So thanks again for watching and I'll talk to you again soon.